Well, we are finally sitting in this corner. Our cardboard tempin is gonna be hitting the road here shortly. I can't believe that it's actually survived as long as it has. He's just kind of uh, making it so that the uh, corner sits flat or fit up here so we can tack it in. Been thinking a lot about old tree beard lately. Turn on that camera pretty well. How sad it was that they lost their ents. Yeah, that was pretty soft and sad. The entlings. Entings. Alright, we'll just zap this, huh? Yeah, I think so. Okay, do we like it? We like it a lot. We do like it. Do you? I love it. We do. nearly as out and weird as the other side was, huh? Folks, so just saw us move our work table. It's probably the oldest piece of remaining uh, infrastructure that hasn't really been dismantled in this project. It's been here with us the whole time. So, uh, first time it's actually left the back deck since we built it. See a giant pile of junk. Uh, there's our captain's chair. We took it off the pedestal in there like a while back just to be able to get in and out of the uh, cabin door up there. We've got a radar dome, a few fiberglass supplies, some aluminum, uh, shackles and chain, and scrap aluminum bender. So yeah, we'll go ahead and clear this junk out of here and we'll let you know what we're getting up to now.
right, folks. Well, now that we have all this junk out of the way, what's the plan? To do some stanchions and to get the rest of this deck finished. Cool. So what do we need to do first? Uh, maybe stretch a couple string lines out, I guess, huh? Mm-hmm. So we can get our heights established for the back stanchions and the forward ones. So the material we're using is uh, one by six planks for back here. So they're a little thinner than the forward ones. Um, we did that for a couple different reasons. Number one, there's less traffic and less weight back here as far as a lot of stuff coming on the deck. Most of the heavy stuff is always kind of um, focused up forward where your hatches are. If we're dropping down pallets of bait or gear, things like that, that's generally where that stuff gets landed. Um, crab pots, things like that. Back here, it's usually a little bit lighter duty. So we thought we'd just go with some thinner material. Uh, maybe space our stringers a little bit closer together as a result, but save on, on some weight from the thickness of the planks. So that was our thought process behind that. This first stringer where it butts up against the, the inch and a half material forward, it'll be up a little bit higher. So we need to get that laid out and then this back one. And once we have the height adjusted for those, then we can start getting our stringers laid out. But we'll get these first two in then get a center one and then we can gauge how it looks. We'll throw a couple of planks down and then at that point we'll get the rest of the uh, heights worked out. So that's where we're at. guys so we're making progress here got quite a few stringers in we have a total of uh, five full ones that run all the way across actually six and then uh, back there we decided we're gonna do the same thing as we did for this little access hatch here that worked pretty good so it'll be uh, two partials over to around in there same thing over there. The stanchions will end like this one does here. And then that will receive the support uh, stringer for the center removable hatch. So it's coming along pretty good. Uh, slow progress as usual, but you know, just gotta take your time with this kind of thing. You can't really even do it quickly just because it's a lot of measuring, a lot of cutting and positioning and all that fun. It kind of feels like it's overkill back here with the amount of stringers and stanchions, but it's just kind of the way it works out. It's uh, neither feels like it's too much or not enough. And so we'll just err on the side of too much and be happy with it. And we're putting weight back here with some crab pots or long line reel or whatever else we got going on. Deck yep, so back here on the aft deck we have the thinner pieces of uh, 
of plastic, so this is usually uh, normal 2x4 uh, thickness, and then these ones are 1 inch, I guess, huh? 1 yeah. inch and then inch and a half, so we for sure don't want them sagging in between each stringer. Otherwise, it'd be pretty annoying, especially in the summer. It doesn't get super hot here, but, you know, over time they could take form to any sort of sagginess, and yeah, that would not be very appealing. on the job here. You probably just saw a big time lapse of us uh, building these stanchions here on the decking. Uh, pretty much wrapped up now. We got two more to bolt down back there and a couple few to make on the corner there. Just gonna wait a little bit until we get a few deck boards down. It'd be a little bit easier to kind of uh, build them to, uh, to support the decking that way. Yeah, I think our plan is to just take a piece of uh, flat bar like so and it'll go in the corner here. It just has a span like basically four boards and kink it in a couple of spots to carry it around. Um, that will be good. So last night I got these uh, deck uh, stringers glued together, laid up some 45 to connect them and so they're nice and solid now. Not that they weren't before, there's a support under it anyways, but it's to kind of uh, tie them together and keep our stringers in line and make it easier for bolting. Didn't take long to get those laid up. I think probably about an hour to get those glass together. And so yeah, it'll be a nice, good structure now, one piece. All the stanchions are in, it's kind of a forest of them down there. It looks like an awful lot. It looks like the spacing is really close together, but that's just really how it worked out. You either got them crowded in and it looks like it's overkill or things were going to be spaced too far apart and we felt like that it would be underkill and that we definitely regret it later. We didn't want the spacing too wide on these because they'll sag and then also back here the same is true with the stanchions even though this is very rigid um, like even the span right here is very rigid we still didn't want to go too far on it and so that's why the spacing worked out the way it was um, so what we got going on right here is basically the same as up forward uh, these two stanchions will go there have a short piece here short piece here and this will be the removable piece so we can get into our lazarette um, same thing as we got going over here. Drilled a couple holes and uh, it's just very easy to pick that up and then get into our hatch. I don't really think that we'll have to like mechanically hold this thing down. It's fairly heavy, not terribly heavy, but it's fairly heavy. But it also kind of wedges in there a little bit. So if you don't pick it up fairly straight, it's not going to come out. It just kind of binds up and wedges. So I don't think that there'll be a problem with water coming underneath and lifting it up but we'll see yeah and if it does then we'll just uh go from there and yeah and make a solution i mean it's not like every day is stormy anyways so yeah you know on big boats when i first started fishing it was a pretty normal thing to come out in the morning and and have one of these removable hatches somewhere on the deck and you'd just go you know grab it and put it back in place it's not that big of a thing so kind of the, the whole key to having it easily accessible and removable is to not have to go find a wrench and fiddle around when you need to get down there quickly for something. 
Um, generally, we won't need to get down there, but you just never know. You might need to get down there mm -hmm. and uh, assess something. So, But, yeah, so that worked out real good. Um, now we're just ready to start fitting these other boards. We got a couple over there that are already trimmed for the radius in the back. They look real good. Um, we got these two long ones right here we're going to start out with. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure that they're nice and straight compared to the ones up forward. We'll get these two in line get them measured and squared up to each other. Not sure when we'll get to this corner. Got a little bit of a situation over here. I hate to even mention it. And unfortunately it's one of those things that like when the job's almost done, oh uh, yeah, you notice that something is very wrong with it. If you look straight down at the aluminum rail you and see. you look at it in relation to the rub rail, yeah you can see that this side is in it's a in. lot more and that's <laughs> just not that's not uh lens distortion unfortunately yeah <laughs> so and we're so, about an inch and a quarter further in on this rail on this on the port side here and so it's really annoying because that's one of the things when you're working in this type of environment where you have covers and you have stuff in your way when you line this up we still had braces holding up our shelter deck um so it's a combination of factors that we didn't catch it when we did um if you go look from the outside it's you know pretty obvious the the port side stern is like this and the starboard is like this so you, you can definitely see it visually and i know it's just gonna eat us if we don't fix it so that's a bummer and the other reason too is that we will put probably a, a enclosed shelter deck on here at some point and so if we don't fix it now then it's gonna either have to be fixed later or it's gonna affect that shelter deck um, so the i guess the cause was that we didn't pull this wall in or this uh, back plate in like we had on the other side yeah and, and we didn't because we had a reference mark that we were going off of that essentially showed that that side was about an inch and a half longer than this side and so now i'm questioning like that reference mark might have been wrong or something or somehow somehow we messed it up and uh it's, it's just as simple as that because we had a bunch of junk in here it wasn't really like easy to come look this way we should have um but yeah it's always the hindsight that you can you're in the heat of the like moment you're doing the job and, and you miss that stuff Yep. And so what we're hoping to do here is that we'll come in here and we'll cut the seam right here. I still know where it is because there's a tiny little spot on the outside that I didn't fill and uh, blend back in yet and break it loose from this forward rail. And then we're going to come back here and we're going to cut a pie out of this because the bottom's not going to change. It's the top that needs to pull in. So we'll cut a little piece out of there. We'll remove about an inch out of this, this uh, cap rail here and then we're gonna pull it and we're just gonna see what it does and if if it doesn't want to come in which I don't think it will because it's pretty rigid then we're just gonna have to cut back on this I think we're gonna end up with a gap up here I'm hoping that it's not too much and we can fill it and blend it but if it looks funky then we're just gonna have to redo it and it's just the way things go sometimes I'm not gonna lose too much sleep over it yeah we'd rather fix it now than have it bothering us later and also yeah. have to look at it too because it's, it's pretty obvious when you look down uh the back uh bulwark here that it's <laughs> it's a little off yeah even if nobody else notices it we will it's probably a, a day of work but in the meantime we're gonna go ahead and start getting some of these boards laid out i think um like i say starting with these two first ones get them squared up good and then we'll just kind of start filling in this deck it's gonna be a really good feeling yeah i'm excited for it yeah that forward deck sure turned out good now that's covered with a bunch of stuff can't really see it but can't wait for the back one here to be done so. yeah <laughs>